I'm back. Yes, I have been waiting for two cases to start this week, and it's Wednesday, so I thought, I got to tell you guys what's going on in these cases. They have not started. <laughs> they started with jury selection, but the actual opening statements have not been given in either case. So today, I'm going to update you and tell you why that is. <music> So hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you. I am a crafter. As you can see, it's all over the place. And I describe and recap live trials. So you have something to listen to while you're crafting. But today, where have I been? Waiting, just waiting. <laughs> for these trials to start. Now, there was a trial that started this week, but it involved the baby in the dumpster. And I'm just, I'm over the whole baby in the dumpster thing. Sorry. I'm just, I'm over it. No more children, you know, babies. Okay. So the two cases I anticipated would start some point this week and they will, but just not yet. So I thought I'd have to you know, maybe give you a little bit of an explanation about why they haven't started yet. So on Monday morning, we learn that Sarah Boone, that's the suitcase murder, um, she is charged with second degree murder of George or Jorge or whatever you want to call him, Torres Jr. Her boyfriend at the time, live in, they shared an apartment together in Orlando, Florida. Uh, they were supposed to start trial for this murder on October 7th. Unfortunately, Hurricane Milton had other ideas. And um, this case has been pending. This murder occurred February 24th, 2024. Plus years, cl close to five years. This woman has been sitting in jail. And that's important for, for a point that I'm going to get to. Um, I'm also going to be talking about today the Delphi murders. Yes. And if you don't remember that one, stick around. I got an update on that one that will be starting this week as well. So Sarah Boone, let's go back to Sarah. Good old Sarah. She's on attorneys nine and 10. And they were volunteers based on an advertisement that she placed in the jail. She had this little piece of paper and she wrote, you know, wanted attorney. The judge had ruled after eight attorneys asked to be let off the case, eight different lawyers, because she can't get along with any of them. He ruled that she's not entitled to an attorney anymore and she needs to represent herself. So she puts up this ad and one, some lawyer saw the ad and he decided, hey, this is going to be my 15 minutes of fame. Not a bad idea. So he is representing her and then he got a co-counsel shortly after he got on the case. So there's two lawyers working on her case now and she seems to be getting along with them. I hope so. But uh, the, the attorney's name is James Owen. So Monday morning, they started jury selection and they got a few jurors on Monday. They, they're bringing in panels of like 50 plus people at a time. And they go through their whole spiel and then they narrow it down. Then they bring in 50 more. So they did that yesterday and they did that the day before, Monday and Tuesday. And at the end of the day, they... Uh, they were short, like two jurors. They still needed some alternates. So this morning they come into court Wednesday morning, uh, ready for more jury selection and motions hearings. That's what they've been doing all morning motions in limine. And those are motions to limit testimony and trial regarding certain things. Um, so they come in this morning and two of the jurors have been excused for COVID. One tested positive for the for COVID. Another one wasn't feeling well, tested for COVID, but it was negative. So now we've got this whole COVID thing lingering around there, in addition to everybody's cleaning up after Hurricane Milton. 
So the judge indicated that they would begin jury selection again after lunch today. So they're arguing these motions all morning long. Sarah's there. She's in a suit. Um, she looks she looks okay. She's well-groomed. And her attorneys are there and they're making their arguments and they're going through all these pretrial motions. She is... Uh, you know, based on my listening to these motions, she does plan to take the stand in her own defense so she can put out this notion that she is a battered spouse. So they have uh, filed a motion that they intend to use that as a defense in this case. So what that means is she's got to testify. She has to testify about, you know, why this is a battered spouse case. And then they got to bring in an expert to back that up. Um, so based on what she testifies to, we'll know whether or not the judge is going to allow an expert to come in and testify regarding battered spouse. It's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting because she's trying to, she's trying to drive this case. You can see that she still thinks she's in the driver's seat and she's trying to drive it. So <sighs> as evidenced by a plea deal. Last week, the the state, you know, Hurricane Milton's whirling around out there in the, in the Gulf. The state says, hey, you know what? We'll offer you a plea deal. Plead guilty to manslaughter. Right now she's charged with second degree murder. So like first degree is premeditated. Second degree is you did it. You had a depraved heart, sort of... Um, crime of passion type thing. And then manslaughter is you didn't intend the death, but it happened. So there's a plead guilty to manslaughter, 15 years. She's already served almost five years. She probably would have been out fairly soon. The charge that she is facing, second degree murder, that depraved heart one, um, she could be serving anywhere from 22 and a half years to life in prison. But clearly she believes, hey, I'm going to get found. I'm going to be found not guilty. So what that means is that probably opening statements, highly likely opening statements will be tomorrow morning. And they are on East Eastern Standard Time. I would like to cover them live, you know, if I can catch them live. <laughs> um, yes, I would like to cover that live. So let me tell you what's going on in the other case, the Delphi murder cases. Now, with Sarah, we're in Florida, Hurricane Milton, the whole Orlando, Florida thing. That's where they're at. This Delphi murder is a trial for Richard Allen. He is the uh, 52-year-old gentleman that was arrested in 2022 for the 2017 murders of Abby Williams, who was 13 years old at the time, and Libby German, who was 15 years, 14, 14 years old at the time. She, uh, Abby and Libby had gone for a walk. This is up in Delphi, Indiana, Carroll County, Delphi, Indiana, really really small town, less than 3,000 residents in Delphi, Indiana. Anyway, these girls are, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a nice day. They're, they've got school off. They decide we're going to go for a hike on this Monin High Bridge, which is this railroad bridge, scary as hell, railroad bridge that you could walk over. Well, you could at the time. I don't think you can anymore. I think they've cordoned it off probably because of this case. I don't know, but you know, it's a scary bridge, but these girls wanted to go out there. They go out there. They're never seen again. Sister notified, you know, sister goes to pick them up. They don't show up. So they start looking for them. They find their bodies um, for years. No one knew the cause of death. Everything was sealed tighter than a, no, oh, I'm not going to go there. It's YouTube, but <laughs> it was all sealed. We now know that the girls were fatally stabbed. They arrest Richard Allen. There were they, you know, they come out with these two sketches that really don't look a lot like Richard Allen, but they do find video on Abby's phone at one of them's phone. I don't 
I don't know, remember which one. One of them had their cell phone running. And they have this video of this man walking. Now, now you're probably remembering the case. This man walking the bridge saying, down the hill, down the hill, girls, down the hill which haunts me to this day. I can still see that video, hear that voice going down the hill. Supposedly that's Richard Allen. Now Richard Allen confesses, but why did he confess? And what did he confess to? Shooting them. Then he gets shot. <laughs> yeah, they were stabbed. So do they have the right guy? Are we, do we have the right guy on trial? Is this a false confession? These are issues that are going to play out during this trial. So on Monday morning uh, up in Allen County, Indiana, which is a much larger county. Um, well, let me, even let me go back even further than that. Because of the smallness of this town, less than 3,000 people, uh, they had a special judge appointed for this. So we have a special judge who's not always in the best of moods. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Doesn't like the media. Anyway, she she's a special prosecutor. They go over to a different county, Allen County, on Monday morning, and they start picking a jury from Allen County much larger county. So that happened all day Monday, all day Tuesday. They're cheering, choose, they're bringing in large groups of people at a time. And each time they bring in a large group of people, the, the attorneys give like these many opening statements, not, not their whole opening statement, just kind of here's what the case is about. And in Tuesday's opening statement, which was a little different than Monday's, the defense attorney let the cat out of the bag that Libby or Abby Williams was holding a hair when they found her. She had a piece of hair in her hands that does not match the defendant. What? Do we have the right person? I don't know. Then there was some rumors along the way that there was some cult activity involved, some satanic activity. And then there's been this uh, story that he's being held in solitary at a prison pending this trial, which I don't even know if that's even legal that you can do that, but apparently that's what's been happening. So anyway, back to jury selection. So they give these many statements, they choose a panel and then uh, Monday, they have, they only need, at the end of the day, they only needed a few more jurors, like less than a handful of jurors they still needed uh, for alternates. So they come back on Tuesday morning and they lose some of the jurors, <laughs> four jurors. <laughs> God. Um, apparently one, uh, three or four, one, we don't know why they were excused. One was excused due to childcare issues and another was excused for health reasons. I think uh, she might have been a diabetic and on the first day, the judge didn't even let these people go to lunch. So maybe that was the issue. Um, yesterday, she did let them go to lunch, but here's what's going to happen. So after yesterday, they have a jury. We've the jury has been picked, but they didn't have time to do the motions that they had planned to argue the, the pre-trial motions in limine to limit testimony regarding certain topics. Anyway, that didn't happen. So today they're taking the day off. Not sure why taking the day off, but what they were, the juror has, jury has been told is you need to go home and pack your bags because this jury is going to be sequestered. So Thursday morning, they're, the lawyers are going to come back to court. They're going to argue their motions. So they're taking today off. Tomorrow, they're going to argue their motions. Then everybody's getting on a bus, all the jurors with their suitcases. <laughs> I'd be bringing my crochet, my diamond paintings, some books to read. I'd be like, hey, <laughs> it's a vacation. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, they're busing them over to Carroll County, Delphi, Indiana, this teeny tiny small town. They're going to put them up in a hotel for five 
weeks. This is supposed to be a five week trial. I am hoping for their sake, it is shorter than that because that is a long, long vacation. I wouldn't have a problem with it. I'd be like, hey, let's go. I don't have to cook dinner. Yeah. <laughs> for five weeks. No grocery lists, no laundry. Well, I guess they still have to do laundry, but anyway. <laughs> so when our opening statement is going to be uh, probably Friday, Friday. So I will cover those for you live when they are scheduled. And uh, so opening statements tomorrow, Thursday for Boone or late this afternoon, which I highly doubt. So look for those tomorrow, and then Friday, look for the opening statements in the Delphi murder case. So I haven't disappeared. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm just, you know, when I don't have anything to talk to you guys about, I don't, I don't record. So uh, I hope you get, that gave you a little bit of flavor of what's been happening this week, and I will hope to see you tomorrow during the opening statements. I will be live tonight for my Craft With Me Wednesday, Strictly a Crafting Show. You get to see what I'm working on. Probably tonight is going to be crochet. I'm doing a crochet along with Fiberflux, a YouTube channel that fantastic. Check them out. They're they're doing a crochet along where they give you a pattern and you get the yarn and you do the pattern. And, you know, I'll show that to you tonight. So have a wonderful day, everybody. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.